Man, intro card has just been angry at me today. So, Bretonia taking on Norska, round two, and uh, let's see what happens. All right, you want the nobles or the Vikings? Oh, I'll go with the uh, the noble noble peasantry. Peasantry, the true heroes of Bretonia. Anyway, starting with the infantry corps, we have four battle pilgrims. Backing them up, we have the Beast Slayers of Vastel, Yarlwar, Butchfires. Now for the skirmish potential, we have four mounted yeoman archers. One of them being the Yarlwar, Wardens of Baltimore. Now, oh, we do have two peasant mob, the glorious, glorious heroes. With their shovels and pitchforks in hand. And, uh, yeah, look at that. Nice little peasantry mob. <laughs> it's funny that I like the uh, the peasants are here. Uh, they're guarding the rear, as they are the elites of the Bretonian infantry. <laughs> Clearly, they need to be kept in the back lines as the last bastion. The last defense. Now, we do have a single royal peg knight in the air. And you know what? That is the only melee cab on the field for Bretonia. As they have a very strong hero squad, we have Gotrek. It looks like he's got quite a few uh, good beasts in his kit. So we have, we have a Foe Seeker. Okay. And then Runax and Gotrek. So just a couple of abilities. Now we have the Green Knight. Yes, the Green Knight. Ladies and gents. We have the Morris Blade. And, uh, yeah, Sacred Guardian. Did not heal. We do have the Fey Enchantress. She's on foot. She has the full kit. Favorite the Fey. Chalice of Potions. Both healing spells. Now, what has the Viking brought to deal with the noble peasantry? HW. Well, the Vikings over here are going to have a front line consisting of three marauders. They're going to have two marauder spearmen in the back line. And then they're going to have some chariots. So, one, two marauder chariots. Two finger warriors are great weapons. Two warhounds, as well as a Norskan ice wolf. He's got that shaman sorcerer of fire with burning head, flaming sword of ruin. And Kindle Flame, and then he's got Throggy Boy. So Throg's gonna be here with Fight or Die and nothing else, and that rounds out our Norskin Force, so I don't know. This will be interesting. But I think the Bretonians have a pretty solid chance here, especially since we're not seeing Berserkers or anything on the field. The chariots are gonna have to be used very, very well in order to knock out the Bretonian infantry. Um so yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I do worry about Throg here when he gets in combat with Gotrek and the and Green yep, Knight. That'll be fun. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. There is magic damage on the field, so that should help. It yeah. also really helps. This is a shaman sorcerer, and not a male fiend. Yeah, or, which would have more magic damage and uh, more uh, hitting potential. Yeah, yeah. Throg versus uh, Gotrek should be a clash of champions there. And I can't wait to see who uh, comes out on top. Go so trick. a nice royal peg charge could be the uh, win condition here. Pegs get crumped. Bretonia loses. A couple good peg charges. Bretonia wins. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. We oh, will indeed, but one Norskin Warhound already wavering low on health. And, you know, the Norskins, I think, rightfully assuming that they'd be up on the high ground. But they're going to have to turn their force and go down to find the Bretonians who are just cheekily hiding in the forest here as the mounted yeomen do their work and the royal pegasus knights just kind of a look for an opportunity to dive in and do some serious damage yeah it's clever positioning really over here not many people uh even use this uh part of the map yeah for the most part so it's uh yeah a seldom explored area of the map and We'll take some time for the Norskin to make his way over to this part of the map, but it's probably ev evident to him at this point. Yeah. Where the Bretonians are. Well, now these Warhounds are going to try to run away from the Pegasus Knights. Obviously, the Pegasus Knights are much faster, though, and so it looks like they'll just chase them off um, completely. But the Mounted Yeoman Archers um, still firing away, doing some nice damage. But they are getting down to about half ammo, so once they run out, the jig is up. Oh my goodness, the Pegasus Knights are on the ground charging, and there they go. Warhounds are going to start routing again, and uh, there's some good value yeah. for the Bretonians. 
Kind of tough though. They are very far from uh, what may soon be a critical mainline engagement. But then again, I say that it's still a ways for the Norskins, and the Norskins are taking their time. They are walking over. So yeah. Well, and also, I mean, the pegs this night's the lovely thing about the royal pegs. They have those that perfect vigor, which will allow them to just uh, fly around the map no matter how far. It's not like they're going to get tired, which is always nice. Um, but you're right, you know, they need to get over here sooner rather than later, but, I mean, at this point, I look at the Norskin Warhounds, once again, just getting sniped down by the Mounted Yeoman Archers, and, uh, now the Norskins are getting ready to close the gap, but I have to say, Battle Pilgrims are gonna be able to beat Marauders. Yeah, really oh, wait, like they're Marauder Champions, too. I totally lied. Three Marauder oh, yeah. Champions, I thought they were Marauders, never mind, three Marauder Champions will be able to crush Battle Pilgrims. I do not know yeah. how I missed that. It looks like he's trying to engage, uh, put a nice flat uh, line here. Well, straight line, I should say. Yeah, get, so a, get a nice, head. juicy burning head. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. I mean, now that I see those are Marauder Champions, that completely changes my outlook on this match. Oh, here we um, go. But here comes the burning head. The East Slayers. Oof. I would have liked it. Uh, Half damage. Oof. Yeah, I still would have liked it. Be a bit greedier, maybe go after the battle pilgrims too. But yeah, I mean, that's that was a really good cast. It but was. a nice earth blood here, gonna heal up some of that damage. Yeah, man. I mean, they don't have any models lost pretty much, so it's gonna be able to take a lot of health back. But look at this Norse and Ice Wolves now getting routed by the Mounted Yeoman. They are wavering, and uh, yeah, Mounted Yeoman just doing really, really well. But over here, Fey Enchantress getting smashed on by Throg, Gotrick, and the Green Knight look like. Well, at least the Green Knight looks like he's trying to focus on the Chariots for now. Pegasus Knights are coming in, ready to dive in on those Chariots as well. But yeah, the Femir oh. Warriors doing very well for themselves. Uh, I'm not sure what Throg's doing. It's yeah. like, maybe he's okay. Is that, uh, no? I thought he was getting a burning head, but... Now he's just getting surrounded by Pegasus Knights and the Green Knight. Yeah, he was fighting uh, Faye, winning the game, but then he just ran into the back lines, and this is exactly where Throg does not want to be. Yeah, Famer Warriors are great weapons. Look like they're coming over to support. They would be able to crush the Pegasus Knights, though, and Throg is getting away, not unscathed, but not taking nearly as much damage as I thought he would in that engagement, so I guess we'll see what happens from here, and now it looks like Throggy Boy is coming back after the Faye. At least that's what I would be doing. Yeah, still. Reunited the pegs. Hot on his trail. They're going yeah. after that troll booty. And, uh, yeah, Throg is just taking some devastating hits now. But, oh, is this a juicy burning head? It's like it is. But. Yeah, Chariot's coming in to kind of hold the Pegasus Knights and the Green Knight back from Throg as he continues to wheel around. And now, here come the Femir Warriors, um, getting back into combat, and this is Throg's chance now to dive in and kill the Fey. He has the Femir Warriors here, who will be more than enough to counter the Royal Pegasus Knights and the Green Knight, I think, with their magical damage. So, Throggy Boy just needs to get over here and look at the Pegasus Knights just melt away to those Femir Warriors. Yeah. It's like, uh... Oh, burning head going down. It looks like, yeah, flaming sword of room, but that's actually, uh... I think it's going to be a bad thing for Throg as he tries to kill the Fae. He needs to go after the Green Knight and take full advantage of his magic damage here. Yeah. Because uh, the Fae has magic resist. Earthblood uh, getting popped. And... Yeah, it looks like Throg may... I, I'm having a hard time seeing what he's going to do here. Get away! No, right. I guess she has physical resist and magic resist, so it works out all right. <laughs> yeah. Green Knight is running away from the Femir Warriors with great weapons. I agree with that pick. And then over here, you know, the Marauder Champions, with the help of some Chariots, are taking out the Beast Slayers of Bastone. And there's still a full health Marauder Spearman holding down the back line, just preventing any cheeky rear charges. But, uh, yeah, now the Green Knight is uh, in combat with Throg. But with the Miststalkers surrounding him, this is really bad news for him. But also the uh, Shaman Sorcerer is getting singled out. He's been caught oh, by the Mountain no. Yeoman and torn up by Gotrek. And that's a loss of magic for the Norskins, which... Uh, we'll see. It's a crazy fight right now. It still says it's Norskins' advantage, but it's a, it's a pit fight. It is a vicious cockfight here. And we'll see who comes out on top. Uh, the Green Knight is the beast in melee. And there's still Earthbloods on the board. And there goes a 
Chalice of Potions on top of a nice little pocket of Marauder Champions. Looks like they're going to start splitting up, running for the hills. And Mounted Yeomen are coming in now. Yeah, that was a good dodge. That negated most of the damage there. Yeah. It really did. But now Gotrek is coming over. He's still full health, unchallenged. Um, but the Norskin infantry has been dealt with for the most part, it seems. And now the Mounted Yeomen are getting dealt with. And here goes Thra getting a nice hit on top of the Fae. But he needs to be careful. If this Green Knight causes terror on both Fimir warriors, then <laughs> he's going to be up a creek. If those nine Fimirs die, I mean, this is uh, Bretonia's game. I mean, it's already yeah. starting to be in their favor now. Yep. As uh, Gotrek's still alive, and uh, Green Knight is reaching his healing cap. But, uh, oh, look at that. A few big hits. I mean, this could, uh, they could just kill the Green Knight here. It basically all hinges on him because, I mean, still Gotrek would be a tough cookie to crack as well. Yeah, there goes the Green My Knight. Goodness. And so, yeah, I think it's about keeping Throg as far away from Gotrek as possible. <laughs> and uh, just killing the Fae and... If he can do that, then he can win this game because Throg has a lot of regeneration in his uh, health bar. So, I just don't know though. Bounce power starting to creep away from him. Okay, there's a nice break. Uh, the Bretonians mounted Yeoman Archer starting to route there from Throg's onslaught. And, like yeah, I say, as I long as... This is Norris's game now. I mean, just killing the uh, Green Knight was such a big win there. Still, it's uh, tough. The, the Fae is so, so slippery. Yeah, even on foot. I guess not on foot since she levitates, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now the Throg. Uh, Ooh, Fimmer Warrior is getting on top of her, staggering her. Yeah, I think Norris has got it from here. Yeah, what a game. What a game, and... Uh, Look at that. Uh, he butter was able to steady the ship. Snags a win here in game two. And uh, yeah, this is serious now. That it is, that it is. So, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> she just went her. flying. <laughs> and uh, I love what he's doing here with the Marauder Champions, just staying on top of uh, Gotrick. But now Gotrick has gotten into Danger Zone um, and is here to protect the Fey Enchantress. Yeah, even Gotrek getting down to half health. Now Marauder Champions are just pretty well suited to tank damage from him and also dish out a lot of their own. I'm taking a higher level view. I'm like, what's left? Okay, they have the Wardens of Montfort still on the field. But other than that, just the, the Fae and Gotrek. And at this point, balance power is starting to creep further and further in favor of our red player. Yeah. The Wardens will have to get in combat pretty soon, since these single entities don't actually count as fighting. It's true. Yeah, they're in combat here with a Marauder Chariot, by the looks of it. Yeah. They're charging the premier. Oh, no. There we go. Uh, Throg like clipped the Fae as he ran by. It's like a drive-by troll kicker. <laughs> oh man, it's another Earth Blood. Throg gonna try to pull away before Gotrek can get him. The troll uh, high kicks are hilarious to me. I know, just like kicking him right in the chest. <laughs> it's funny too because he has this massive uh, hammer, the size of a house, and yet he kicks him. Feet. <laughs> it's just such a troll thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I have this huge club, but I'm going to kick you and make myself off. But then again, it is a fantasy. Game and, uh, yeah. Trolls, uh, Froggy's regen. First phase D regen, and it seems, uh, the Troll King. It's going to come out on top here. From the Lady of the Lake. Well, now it's 1-1, one, one. and uh, we'll see what happens from here, but unless a miracle happens, uh, Gotrek is not going to win this all by himself. 
There goes the phase. She's wavering. She's routing. And uh, balance of power is just out of hand now. It's kind of funny that massive uh, golden chunk on the balance of power. That's just Goat Trek and his axe. Yeah. I mean, you can't underestimate him. Yeah, they've chopped the block right out of that uh, balance of power. And they're, they're not going anywhere in a hurry, but with no armor, he will take pokes. Oh, go, Trek. I mean, I know Gotrek's very dangerous, and I guess there's a chance he's gonna heal up. <laughs> but I would probably start trying to cycle charge him with the Chariot and Throg and the Femir Warriors. Uh, but I don't, don't know. Don't forget these broader spearmen get tankier as the battle goes on. They're just oh, rocking their rage mechanics. You're absolutely so, like, right. They're beastly right now. <laughs> and they have no problem hitting uh, Gotrek in the back. Yeah, they have. Uh... Yeah, they're in stage three. Or no. Are they? I'm not sure. But uh, it's beastly. Nothing. Yeah, they're working on stage 3 right now. So, always forget about that enrage mechanic that the Norsemans have. And yeah, looks like so Gotrek is going to get killed off by spears. Which is probably not what he intended when he was trying to fulfill his Slayer's Oath. Yeah. I'm sure another grudge will go in the book. What Slayer will have to write. But, uh... The rage mechanic is just so strong. You know it's strong, but once you look at it again, you're like, damn, it's really strong. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very strong. Uh, all this, uh, oh, I was kind of hoping uh, Froggy would just stay in combat. You know, just, just duel it out. Just, uh, you know, make it fun. Although a bit risky if uh, RNG yeah. goes horribly wrong. Better safe than sorry. Oh my god, he's replenishing HP. <laughs> oh, go Trek. You bastard. Yeah, just like the books, he's displaying uh, quite a bit of plot armor in this uh, battle here. <laughs> you know? It would seem so. At the next point. Plot armor is strong, Jeff. Plot armor is strong. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, that's a GG, and uh, we're 1 1 now, guys. <laughs> Never seen this ever. Yeah, you know, I think you'd probably like this uh, Norskin army quite a bit. Because what's really missing from this Norskin army, HW, if you're going against a low leadership faction like Bretonia? Terror. Yeah, no terror. It's a uh, very unorthodox, unorthodox pick. And, uh, yeah, claims victory with it. And, but also, I mean, this is a really weird <laughs> Bretonian army. I mean, it's just... I can't think of many times you'd see something like this, you know, forest camping. I mean, this is like wood elves playing Bretonia. 